dark with white spots. Someone just showed me a picture of one that was red with white spots. The famous fly agaric, probably the most recognisable mushroom on the planet. Um, this is a very close relative. There's some there, more there, and then over here we've got some perfect young ones. <laughs> um, so here's our mushroom that we're talking about. And this is a mushroom called the panther cap. Panther which cap. the panther cap, yeah, which is one of the most poisonous mushrooms we're going to come across today. It's not considered deadly. Most importantly, I'm going to use it to um, show you the characteristics of a family of mushrooms. When we teach people about mushrooms, we try to teach novices about how to identify what family a mushroom's in, because some families are entirely poisonous and some families are entirely edible. So if you know what family a mushroom's in, you're quite often halfway towards figuring out whether it's an edible or not. And this is a family that does contain some edibles, but it also contains <coughs> the death cap and the destroying angel and uh, the jeweled amanita and this one, the panther cap, all of which are considered highly poisonous mushrooms with the death cap and the destroying angel being um, notorious as possibly the most poisonous mushrooms that we've got in the country. Um, they are deadly, but there is a, a, a cure for them nowadays. There never used to be up until 2014. If you ate a death cap or a destroying angel, the only way you would survive was if you had the constitution to do so. So a lot of people died from eating death caps. Now, there is a, a cure for amatoxin, which is the, the poison in those mushrooms. Um, but you have to be near a hospital that actually provides it. <laughs> actually, you don't, because death cap poisoning isn't a quick one. It's uh, one of the slowest poisonings. It takes about six or seven days to kill you in total. Six or seven days of awful pain. And, yeah, well, that's more like three years, isn't it? <laughs> um, but anyway, what I'm going to use this mushroom for is to show you the characteristics of that family, that poisonous family, because it's one of the most important ones to stay away from. Now, all of them start as a small egg-shaped structure, and I'll find a young one. Here's a, a very perfect young one. And there were some small ones here. So here it is in uh, three stages of growth. So they start off as this. Oh, I, I even picked a younger one. I feel a bit guilty about that. But there you go. That's how they start off. A bit smaller than that. Looking potentially like a puffball mushroom. Now puffball mushrooms are good for foragers because puffballs are all edible apart from one. There's a, there's a dark puffball called the dusky puffball, which is the only one you can't eat, but the rest of the puffball family are edible. You don't want to make a mistake and pick one of these though, thinking it's a puffball. Um, after its egg stage, you can see what happens is the uh, mushroom breaks through the egg and that's what the speckles are on the cap. They're the remains, the vulval remains of the egg sac. And this one shows a really bulbous base as well. Not all of them have that bulbous base, but all of the family grow from that egg sac. So when you're trying to identify a mushroom, you have to get right down to the bottom of it and you look for the remains of that egg sac there. And if you see the egg sac there, then you leave the mushroom behind. First of all though, if you see speckles on the cat, as a novice, just leave the mushroom behind anyway. Thing is, these speckles can wash off and brush mm. off in the rain. And mm. uh, certain ones of them, the death cap is uh, one where the speckles or the, the sort of sheets that are left on the cap there brush off really, really easily. So the speckles on the cap aren't really a key identifier, but the egg sac and the vulval remains at the base are. Now, this mushroom turns into this mushroom, which will grow up into this. And then what will happen is the cap will open out and leave that skirt on the stem. Now, under the cap, you've got white gills. Every Amanita has white gills. 
So you might not always see speckles, but you'll always see white gills and the bulbous or egg sac remains at the base. Most of them have a skirt, but not all of them. And again, that skirt can brush off. So the key characteristics are the bulbous or egg sac remains at the base and the white gills. Now this one, the panther cat, is uh, one that looks really similar to a couple of edible members of the family. There's one called the blusher, and another one I'm gonna show you a little bit later on today, called the Amanita excelsa, both of which are edible, although the excelsa isn't one that's considered very tasty. The only difference, really, superficially anyway, between the excelsa and the blusher, and this one, the panther cat, is that the skirt on this one is smooth and has no grooves. <laughs> so the edible ones in this family are basically not for novice foragers. My point here is, if you don't know what you're doing, leave every Amanita behind. The panther cap's got a couple of other differences. It's darker at the edge of the cap and lighter and, oh sorry, concolorous normally um, compared to the others. Um, and it's a, a very neat, very well presented mushroom. I find it one of the, uh, the best looking of the Amanitas. But it's basically uh, a, a dark coloured and more toxic version of the red one with white spots that someone was showing me a picture of earlier. So it is considered potentially hallucinogenic as well but it is certainly not one that I would recommend because it has an unknown amount of a deadly, potentially deadly poison called muscarin in it. Trace amounts normally, but that's a, a poison that you certainly don't want in your body. <laughs> Apparently it is eaten in some places after it's been boiled and they throw away the water and then you can cook the mushroom and all of the hallucinogenic and toxic chemicals are destroyed. But um, I'm not 100% sure about that myself. And if you have to boil a mushroom before you can cook it, when there's so many other mushrooms around like there are today, why would you? So Amanita family, it's the first family I've introduced you to today. It's probably the most important one to know because it's got some of the most poisonous ones in the country. Stay away from speckles on the cat, the egg sac, and the, uh, or those in conjunction with white gills. Okay, poisonous starch, we go and find some edible stuff. Yeah. <laughs>